Bobby and Dad show, I learned wildlife photography from Stefano Yanero. Wow, Robbie, that's an amazing picture. How did you do it, and who's Stefano Yanero? Stefano Yanero is a famous bird and wildlife photographer on YouTube. He agreed to do a collaboration with the Robbie and Dad show and was generous enough to invite us to his wildlife pond and use all his equipment. Where are we ro today, Robbie? We're at Stefano Yanero's wildlife pond. Nice. I hear a lot of uh, diversity here, eh, Robbie? Stefano is going to explain the biodiversity of the plants. Nice. Yeah, so if you look over there, there's really not as many plants growing and as many different species growing than right over here. And it's kind of hard to see, but right over here at the beginning of the season is where I put a huge clump of mud because a lot of species use mud for their nests, like wasps and different birds. So I wanted to have an area with mud, but the issue was all over here is sand, which is really nutrient poor. And then right over here is this really nutrient dense mud. So you can see how like all those species right here are really prospering and growing well. So we have brown or black eyed Susans. I don't really know offhand. I think these ones are brown eyed Susans. We have primrose, smartweed, sunflowers, landslip coreopsis, Indian blanket. Uh, this is gonna be, this one I actually shredded because I just passed the mower right over here. Uh, but right over here is gonna be, this one over here is gonna be lamb's quarter and milkweed over here too. This is what the monarch butterflies, well, basically their whole oh, life nice. cycle happens on this plant. And then there's some random grasses and some other plants that I don't even really know what they are in here. So this patch right here is really great for just a bunch of different species. And over time, like different animals are going to start using it. So if you look, I just kind of shook them up a bit. There's one, there's a bug right there. Yeah. So that's Japanese beetle right there. Oh yeah. Then right over here, you have a really great predator. That's a jagged ambush bug. So they'll blend into the flowers just like that. And they'll wait for anything. They can actually eat prey up to 10 times their size. And they just wait for any other insect to just land on the flower and they'll jump. They have like little... Uh, raptorial forelimbs right there mm -hmm. and almost like a praying mantis where they just lunge at their prey and then they'll wow. use their long proboscis to drink the juice out of the insect wow. so that is gorgeous yeah you can see yeah from that you can definitely see the uh the forelimbs so you see they use those yeah. so yeah so really interesting just to have not only the things that i planted because i did throw some seeds around and uh, there's a chipmunk right there Oh yeah, he's big. Yeah, so when I mowed this patch over here, I ended up shredding up a bunch of sunflowers. So that's what he's after. Oh, I see, yeah. Uh... Oh, there's seeds everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So we also got purple coneflower over here. This is Jerusalem artichoke, clover, white campion, and then some more of the same plants that we had just on the on the side over here. So yeah, there's a good diversity. Little by little, things are gonna start coming in. Also, a lot of the things that I put in this year were perennials, so they'll only end up flowering next year. So next this is nice, because this is your backdrop for the water. Yeah, exactly. So this yeah. is kind of the background. Right now with this newly shredded ground, it's not the nicest uh, ground, yeah. but this will slowly grow back and, and fill up nicely. Yeah. But yeah, for the time being, it's... Uh, a pretty good start very nice so robbie what is this this is a bird hide to actually hide while you're photographing birds nice yeah so i basically found a bunch of materials that were lying around and decided to make an in-ground blind one of the biggest reasons is because on the bank over there when the birds come down to drink and bathe you want to be eye level with them that's the most appealing angle you can get so getting down to the ground is much more easy to get eye level and I'd be able to sit down instead of having to lie down on the ground like I did a couple of years ago on my other blind. So this way, if you can come over here and, and look down below. So you also angled the uh, the water uh, with the sunrise in the back. Yeah, exactly. So the sun, yeah. well, the sunset actually. So the sunset. sun rises behind us, the sun yeah. sets pretty much directly around behind the pond. So that just gives a nice backlight to the subjects. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah. So, and then the, you have a little roof on the other side there. Yeah. So over here, a lot of plants growing around it. Uh, 
I just made like a little garden roof. So these are just a couple plants that I had in my old pond. And uh, these ones have already, these are chives over here. So these have already gone to seed. They're all oh. dried up. So they're gonna start spreading their seed any day now. Well, they're already starting basically. And yeah, this was just a little addition I made just cause I was wondering what I would do. And I wanted one part I could stand at and one part I could sit at. Cause if you are in there all day, it is nice to stand up a bit and oh, able yeah. to watch. So I can stand up, I can lean against the top over there and just look out and, and wait for birds or other wildlife to show up. And then here I just figured having a, a garden on the roof was just an, a good way to, uh, to fill up the space. Nice. So yeah, so I, I stacked two chairs for you. I don't know height wise if that's gonna work with the camera. So if you wanna go under there and then just sit, uh, I could see if it, uh, if it'll work for you. So you've never, uh, you've never taken photos before, right? Mm, no, well not with a professional camera. Okay, so we'll leave it really simple. I'll have most of your settings just kind of like on an auto setting. So you don't have to worry about adjusting your settings too much. Pretty much all you really need to know is this right here is the focus button. So when you click it, actually I'll make your, your area a bit bigger. So you're focusing in a bigger area. When you click it, it'll start auto-focusing. I don't know if you can see those little... The green dot? The yeah. For the nine, actually. Yeah. So right now, nothing's really happening. So, but if you zoom in, for example, see, it's like constantly going to be focusing. And if you do get a bird in your frame, this has bird eye detection auto-focus. So it'll automatically focus on the eye of the bird. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Next year, they're going to come out with a camera where it just automatically goes out for you. You don't even have to go out. And it, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no. So it, it makes it way easier. So if it could detect that you're actually focusing on a bird, it'll focus on the eye, which is usually what you want to sharpen the image. So all you really have to do is hit this button here to autofocus. And then right up here is the shutter button. Here? Yeah. So yeah, so this camera shoots completely silently. And uh, so when you hit the shutter, you can see it's taking photos, but you really don't hear anything. So that's great for the birds. They're not going to get scared by the clap. How comfortable? Oh, do you, can you, could your hand actually reach actually, if you want to try that? Can you reach on both or no? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, what you're going to want to do is then just focus with this. And then if you want to adjust right over here is the ball head. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be able to shift it around and you just lock it up. And then this is the zoom in and zoom out. This one right here. So if you want, you can start zoomed out. It'll be easier to find your subject when you're zoomed out. And now we just have to wait for the first subject. But if you want, you can practice on different things. Like if we see a frog, or if you just want to like say, say, uh, I want you to focus on those flowers up there, those yellow those flowers. Yellows? Yeah. And then can you zoom in on those? Oh, nice, Robbie. You and, centered your subject there. And you have to refocus, probably. And there you go. And then you can take some photos if you want. Perfect. Okay, and then let me see if I can spot something else. There's the sunflowers that are going to be kind of scattered throughout there. So he'll probably end up coming on the bank and feeding. You can hear a chickadee calling. I hear song sparrows, some crows, some wax wings. Yes, so you can somehow go up there quickly. Got it? Oh, oh, it's sure. away. Okay, but it might come. Focus on it. So you can oh, see. It's coming, it's coming. You have a hummingbird feeder right over there. So it might actually come for the hummingbird feeder too. It got away, it got away. Oh, yeah. Let's go there. It's going to the back flowers. Yeah. Oh yeah, they don't they don't like to sit still. Oh, there's a song sparrow on the yellow flowers. You see them moving to the left over there? 
So he just flew up. Oh, I see. He just, uh, he just chased each other. That's the thing is, the birds don't, don't sit still for long, so you have a really short window usually. So I have frogs sitting on the uh, on the rocks. Like when we stand up later, I can show you. It'll be it'll be a lot easier to see. No, they're they're smaller rocks, just on like areas of interest. So like you said, you know, you kept seeing the birds landing on that branch to the right. Just I would stay focused on that. Yeah, perfect. Because because that way, like. The odds, you, you basically just look and you wait and see what parts of the pond the birds are using the most and then you try to focus on those areas because those are going to give you the most chance of getting a, a good photo. So yeah, if you're focused on that branch now, we've seen a bird land on it how many times? Four or five at least? Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so good chances before they come to the pond, they'll land on that branch. So whenever we're not focused on something else, we can stay focused on that and that'll give you a pretty good chance of getting a good photo. The branch right over here in the left corner. Is on the left corner, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, you're basically right there. Here, I'll get it for you if you want. This is an eastern chipmunk approaching the wildlife pond. This is the exact same chipmunk feeding on the seeds next to the pond. This is an eastern kingbird. This is an eastern phoebe. I got the shot of a green frog with his head sticking out and you see his eyes in the pond. This is a morning dove shaking its feathers to get ready to fly. This is a song sparrow perched on a branch above the wildlife pond. This is a song sparrow bathing in the pond. Thank you to Stefano Yanero for inviting the Robbie and Dad show to the wildlife pond. If you want to see more incredible wildlife pictures, why don't you go ahead and click on the link to Stefano Yanero's channel. That's it for now for the Robbie and Dad show. He's Robbie. And he's Dad. It would be awesome if you join our channel too. Bye.